I have a new Substack piece out. It is called Work in Progress, Excerpt 4, on the Cosmology of the Octave, Part 1, the Macrocosm. So um, because Substack has limitations on how much data you can send in an email to your audience, I did this in three, uh, three parts. Uh, part 2 uh, here is Excerpt 4. I know it sounds confusing, but Excerpt 4 still on the Ontology of the Octave, Part 2, Microcosm. And then uh, part, extra four on the ontology of the octave, part three, the mesocosm of human society. So um, these densities have these cross-sectional modalities where we go from the, micro, the macrocosm to the microcosm to the mesocosm. And then so uh, I'll read you a little bit of each one uh, in cross-section for red ray energy. Here are the seven densities here. And the eighth is actually an octave that uh, repeats the first density of matter on a higher uh, sp spiral. So the ontology of the eight densities, the universe as it turns out, meaning the entire cosmos, is composed of eight densities, four of which are physically material and three of which are composed of a more refined, subtle matter. The eighth or the octave is a repetition of the first on a higher turn of the spiral. Each level of each octave furthermore contains another sub octave within that and so on, recursively reiterated to infinity. There are three different modalities across, across which these densities are fanned out. A microcosmic, a microcosmic mode of consciousness, a macrocosmic mode of materiality, and a mesocosmic mode of sociality. We will begin with the macrocosm. The first density is, like the Kabbalistic Malkut, foundational in all three modalities. It is red ray energy. With our review of the Big Bang, we have just witnessed its creation, for it corresponds to atoms, elements, and molecules. It is, in other words, non-living matter, at least on the face of it, since even bare base matter is alive insofar as it exists within the mind of the God being. As Rudolf Steiner points out, red is a color that attacks you, whereas blue, which is a higher ray, recedes from you. You want to chase after it. So then if we look at red ray on the microcosm with the chakras here, um, let's look at the chakras then with new eyes. The red ray chakra is the muladhara at the level of the perineum, it is foundational, for it has to do simply with survival like the reptilian brain. Its element is the earth, and it is depicted as on top of an elephant, the heaviest creature on land. It is the seat of passions and desires, such as the seven deadly sins, greed, anger, lust, pride, envy, gluttony, and sloth. The Catholic Church had this much right. Newly incarnating souls will have a tendency to remain at this red ray energy for a while until they gradually learn across their incarnations to stop resorting to violence to solve their problems. So then in the mesocosm, red ray energy, uh, the mesocosm of human society, um, the red ray energy as we have seen at the level of the mesocosm of human society is that of the lone human individual self struggling to survive in a world in which everyone else is doing the same thing. Here, all one can think of is me, me, me. And I've inserted the Jungian diagram here of the ego. Um, and then at the what will happen on the social level is that uh, the self will need to relate at the orange ray chakra, the second chakra, the Svadhisthana, to others. And it starts forming self-other relationships, what Peter Sloterdijk called microspheres. Um, okay, so I'll, subscriptions are still only $5. Um, so I'll leave it there uh, for that little preview. See you on Substack.